So let's first look at the signal strength. There are many utilities that allow you to see that. Let me show you one. So this is on an Android phone, and that's a utility that shows me my signal strength. And you see its various values. It's in percentage. It's also in dBm. And you see a sort of wavy signal somewhere. And I need to tell you that I'm not moving my phone as I'm taking this measurement. My phone is on my desk, not moving. My access point is not moving either. Uh, and nothing is moving around me. There is no obstacle or any source of multipath reflection apart you know, myself breathing uh, next to my phone. And yet, as you can see on this capture, the signal is changing all the time. It's, of course, um, going to uh, in percentage, but you see in numbers it goes to this minus 66, then it goes up to minus 62, 61. In percentage, it's between minus 50%, 58%, then 60%, and 73%, then back to 55%. It's changing all the time. All right, what does that mean? Well, that means a few things. First of all, that the uh, signal itself varies. That is something that you have to be aware of. The signal is going to vary all the time. Even if you don't move, even if you think that nothing is moving, there is always a tiny something that is going to change the multipath. And because of the size of your wave and the size of the space where we live, a tiny change of anything at a distance may be affecting the reflection that is going to change the amount of energy you receive at any given point. That's one thing. The second thing is that measurement of energy, that power of energy that we call the RSSI, which stands for Received Signal Strength Indicator. That is receiving and measurement of, of how much energy was received. What you have to be aware of is that it changes all the time also because it is not a very precise value. It's usually, as you see, a negative number. We don't typically use that percentage value because 76% of what? What does that mean? But in dBm, that's something we can measure, right? Because that's a scale. And if you receive 50 dBm, and if I receive 60 dBm with this rule of 10, I can compare how much more or how much less you're receiving than I am. So we typically use dBm. It's typically a negative number because we receive only a tiny bit of the energy that was sent. And remember, the access point sends between 1 and 100 milliwatt max. So it's very easily going below 1 milliwatt power, so you get a minus something, minus something in dBm. The thing also is that it's a very imprecise value for many reasons. One of them is that it's a vendor-dependent value. In other words, how much energy do you receive? How do you measure that? In fact, the way the circuit works is that you have the receiving antenna, below which there is some circuits that make the signal collected and usable by the electronic chip behind. And that chip is supposed to use that energy, that signal, transformed from a radio wave into actually pulses of current to make intelligence of it and recognize zeros and ones. It's going to do that, and it depends very much on the circuit, its quality, its ability to receive that amount and do something with it. So from one vendor to the other, that ability may be different because the quality of the components and the way this wiring is done might be different. And the result is that that measurement is typically a scale that is in a binary scale from, let's say, 0 to 255 sometimes, but sometimes less than that, which measures the ability of that signal to be usable, to see 0 and 1s inside. And that scale from 0 to 255, say, is converted then into some dBm value for representation on the screen so you can read it. And two vendors may have different scales. One may go from 0 to 255, while the other may go from 0 to 100. And they will not be measuring the same circuits to achieve the same result. So that result makes that the, the RSSI, keep that in mind, is always vendor dependent. Also, the quality of the circuit may be different from one vendor to the other. So not only the scale, but also the quality. And that results into two cards from two different vendors, exactly the same spot, may display different results. It's even worse than that. Two cards from the same vendor at the same location may also show a different RSSI. Of course, they will use the same scale in that case, but because there are two physical components that were made at different points in times, there may be some small variations in the quality and the wiring that makes that one will display a different result. So the RSSI value is interesting 
as it translates you know, into this ability for the circuit to convert so this signal into zeros and ones. It's also interesting for us as a scale to understand how much energy a lot or very few are we receiving. But it shouldn't be taken as something absolute. It should be taken as sort of a scale that gives you an idea of what kind of level we're talking about. So this is an example. Let me show you a picture interesting I took a couple of days ago. So here I have five devices, one tablet and four phones. My access point is a few tens of feet uh, on the other side of the room. I don't know if you can read the signal, but I have some devices saying that one on the left says I'm reading minus 47 dBm. The other one just next to it says, oh no, it's minus 43 dBm. The one in the middle says, no, it's minus 48 dBm. And the one just next here says, no, it's minus 57 dBm. And the one completely at the right says, no, it's minus 72 dBm. What is fascinating is that two of these devices are of the same make. You see, those two are exactly the same phone. One has a cover, the other one does not, but they're the same phone. And one says, oh, excellent signal. And the one says, yeah, kind of weak. Of course, they're not exactly the same physical spot, but this is just a way for me to uh, convey to you that this RSSI scale not only changes over time, and you'll see, you know, as you saw my phone going up and down because the environment is changing, but also the ability of the circuit is changing based on the texture of the signal. And that makes that one phone may be giving you a value that changes, but two phones, identical phones, will definitely give you two values. Typically, we say when you read an RSSI value, you should not trust it by more than 4 dB. So if you read minus 70, it could be anything more or less 4 dB for another phone. You will see more variations, but that's an average. So that's the uh, receive signal strength indicator, how much energy you receive. It's an important notion to have to know how much you receive, but it's also important to keep in mind that this measures is relative to the vendor and the device.